Hello, hello. So I'm here to talk about my ayahuasca retreat and my experience. I've watched a lot of videos about Aya and I've read a lot about it. And I had a very good idea of what I was getting myself into. I've been doing meditation for more than 20 years now. And I've been a member of the Trubita School. And I've been practicing uh, deep breathing techniques. So I felt like I'm finally mature, I'm ready, and I couldn't wait to do Aya. I was so excited, so thrilled. I made the first appointment that I could. Uh, I, I attended the first retreat that I could in Amsterdam. And I think I did it about two to three weeks uh, before, before the actual retreat. It was very much last minute. Originally, I had a flight uh, made uh, for next year, but I couldn't wait until next year. I had to do it. I had to do it now. I found a good shaman, a good retreat that was very reasonably priced. Um, I think it was 500, approximately 590 U.S. dollars for uh, two nights ayahuasca, Friday night and Saturday night. So yeah, I was I was really excited to do it. Um, made the reservation, took the time off of work, flew. Uh, to Amsterdam, uh, had a good time in Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a great city, by the way. I love Amsterdam. Beautiful architecture, nice people, love the food. Nothing's too expensive, but enough of that. Um, yeah, the ayahuasca experience. Um, you know, I, before the retreat, uh, they want you to fast. I avoided uh, coffees, uh, pork, uh, beef avocados, bananas, um, everything they had on the list, soy products, soy sauce, soybeans, soy milk, and what and whatnot. And I fasted, I didn't eat from, from one o'clock on that day, I didn't eat. And so I focused on, on staying hydrated because I knew I was probably gonna throw up. Or at, le at the very least, I knew I was gonna feel queasy, like most people do. <clears throat> so, I, find, I get I get to Amsterdam. I find the venue, and there's about 25 other people in the room, and we're all sitting uh, around the room, not not exactly in a circle. Everybody's backs are kind of to the wall, and the the room is shaped kind of irregularly. So we were, I think, if we could have been in a circle, they would have made us in a circle. The, w the way the room was shaped, it wasn't possible. But anyways, so yeah, there's candles everywhere. And we didn't have to worry about lighting, and I was really worried about that. Because in some in some videos, people in some retreats, especially the ones in Peru, it's dead. It's completely dark, and I guess you have to bring your own lighting, your own flashlight. And at this particular retreat, I didn't have to worry about that. Which was so we get there, and I try uh, the medicine. It's my turn, and I down it, and it tastes like a sour smoothie that didn't have nearly enough water with some dirt mixed into it. It was really thick and kind of earthy and with an aftertaste, a slight cocoa aftertaste. And it really, it wasn't bad at all and I don't understand why people make such a big deal about the taste because it really wasn't that bad. So I watched, I kept notes and I watched my clock very closely because I wanted to document my experience from start to finish. And first uh, hour goes by and uh, the shaman asks if anybody wants a second cup a top off where he just gives you a little bit more. And I said, no, I better, you know, I, I, I was debating with myself and I wasn't seeing any colors or visualizations and I'm thinking, should I, should I not top off? And I just said, you know, maybe I should, it's best that I, you know, keep it safe. And I didn't top off. And I just, you know, I talked to the shaman after the, third, the second hour goes by. Shaman says, does anybody want a, want a, want a second cup? You know, and I'm, I'm like, you know, after the second hour, I haven't seen anything. I talked to the shaman. He says, you know, uh, why don't you just, uh, you know, uh, enjoy the music and, uh, you know, work on your intentions. You know, because you before you start the ceremony, you have an intention of what you want to work through. And just think about your intentions and just enjoy the trip. So I did that. First night goes by. Nothing really happened. I felt really stoned, really high. It's it's very much like mushrooms. Um, when I when I took shrooms, I 
you know, your head kind of feels heavy and you, you feel buzz and you, you walk around, you know, you, your balance isn't the greatest. And it lasts about four or five hours. And that's, that's exactly how ayahuasca was for me on you know, the first night. It was, it wasn't much different than I was like, if I was like really stoned and marijuana. So, yeah, that was, that was first night. Second night was, was much different. So, after the first night, we get together, everybody, and we're talking. And I had a really, really nice, interesting conversation with a girl from Germany. And, yeah, there's, it's incredible. One of the biggest things that I took from this ayahuasca ceremony wasn't actual, the actual ayahuasca ceremony. It was actually the people who participated in the ceremony. They actually made it very, very special because I met people who can see spirits. They have their third eyes open. People had out-of-body experiences. Um, some people are really, really advanced. A lot of people had already done this uh, ayahuasca before, and they've had all kinds of vis visions and and yeah, it's like it's yeah. I mean, the people they're very loving. They're very loving. They're accepting of me. So many hugs. I hug so many people, and I got hugged so many times, so tightly. And the, the warmth and the love that I felt in that room was incredible. That's that's probably the biggest thing I took. I actually, since I came back from Amsterdam, I actually feel more self-confident in just in life and just being here, knowing that there's so many loving people, knowing that there's so many people that care for me and love and love me so much, so deeply. Uh, yeah, it's really, really uh, uplifting to me, and it's. I feel like I'm being lifted from a, you know, from from being on the ground. Yeah. So second night, I take the cup, and this is supposed to be a more concentrated uh, batch, and it was more concentrated. I could feel things coming on, and when you're on ayahuasca. And this happened the first time too. I kept feeling nauseous. I felt a wave of nausea would come over me, and I would just take a slow deep breath, and then I would exhale slowly, and then I would take another slow deep breath, and exhale slowly, and the nausea would just go away. And throughout the first night, I did this. Second night, four hours go by, the nausea comes. I just blow it away, and I'm like piece of cake. That's no problem. So I'm feeling energetic. I go in the next room. I'm doing push-ups and I'm just, I'm amped up. I'm like, yeah, I just made two, two sessions. You know, I didn't have to throw up. So the shaman declares the ceremony officially over. I'm like, cool. Not a problem. You know, I was just like, it's too bad. I didn't see any visualizations, but you know, maybe next time. And that's when the, the stuff hit the fan and I threw up. I didn't even see this this heave coming. It just came out of nowhere. It came up so fast. I had to grab my bucket, and I threw up into the bucket just to, just in time. And that's when I started getting sick, and I I'm, and I, I started seeing visions and and colors and fractals and shapes. It wasn't very bright. It was kind of faint, but I think I saw the universal consciousness, and he kind of manifested as a blue light. And he was showing me how he pervades every inch, every molecule of the space that we that we live in. And then I thought I saw Mother Ayahuasca kind of manifesting in front of me as these large, white, soft orbs of light. But they moved around like a female would. They never stayed in one place. And she kind of communicated to me that this is how it should be. This is all my life. I've been trying to be hard, to be masculine, you know. And what she was trying to tell me is that I should try to be try to be soft. I should try to be more feminine. Try to be more understanding, more forgiving, more yielding. And so that's been a big change for me because throughout my life, I've always seen the masculine as the dominant uh, trait, and that's what I should be. And that's apparently that's completely wrong. I should be more try to be more feminine. So that's <clears throat> yeah. I got I got sick and 
after uh, the second ceremony, actually, and, and then I, so I, I continued, you know, I, to go through the second night. I saw these visualizations, and I didn't feel nearly as stoned the second night as the first night. The way my body works, my body tends to, once my body gets exposed to something, it, it tends to learn it and get clear it out fast. So I didn't feel near the intensity or the buzz on the second night as the first night. By the way, I, I should say this. I, I was, the ayahuasca was really intense. First night was really, really intense. Super intense. I felt really stoned, really buzzed, really high. And you wake up the next day. Basically, I mean, I only got like four hours of sleep. The next day I get up, I go into town because... I'm going crazy inside that little, that dark little room, and you know, which I'm packed in there with 25 other people I don't know, and we have breakfast, and then I go out to town, and I come back, and it's five o'clock or whatever, and I'm still recovering from the first night, and I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me! You want me to do this all over? It's it's almost like like a night on the town, and you're drinking, and you're you're getting hot, you're you're, you're getting wasted. And you're throwing up all over the place, and you're just completely flat out gone, blasted. And then getting going to bed, getting up the next day, and then doing it all over again. That's that's how I felt. I really didn't want to do the second ayahuasca ceremony because I was still recovering from the first night. But I was just like, okay, winner. I mean, I can't even imagine three nights, four nights. I mean, some people do it too. Are doing these like you know on, on many consecutive nights, and I really. I don't understand how they do it. But anyways, so I did the second night, and it was good. You know, I got to see some visualizations. and, and But, you know, you know the way the way this, this medicine talks to me, it's, it's not so much a conversation like I'm having with you. It's more lights. It's more sensations. It's more feelings and intuition. Um, that's, that's kind of how, this, how it works with me. But yeah, the, probably one of the biggest things I took from the experience, besides the people and the love that, 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 that pervaded that whole retreat. And yeah, I can't wait to go back and, uh, and, and, and see these people again. Was the remapping of my energy. I could feel, when I came home, I could feel the energy like, a, like an inverted triangle. It was as if ayahuasca took all my energy, my sexual energies, and compacted it down and was forcing everything up and through. And I could feel... What's the best way to put this? I mean, that's just, that's just the state that I felt like I was in. Like, all my energies were going, were being funneled up through my head, like like this, out, up and out. And after I came back home, obviously I stopped fasting. And I, one of the first things I did was I grabbed a ham sandwich and and some coffee from Starbucks and, and some avocado. And I started, I just completely broke my fast and started eating cookies and chips and whatnot. I could feel this triangle being inverted and now it's more like this, more more like it was before. And I can feel the energy now coming down and it's just dissipating out. And I don't know, you know, it's that's kind of, I guess, and I guess the message I take away from that is Mother Aya wants me to do things to help build up my energy and to, and to, not, and to not let it waste, you know, not to eat so much junk food, uh, you know, do things that are damaging, harmful to my body, and let my energy dissipate. I guess, I guess that's the lesson to be learned here. But yeah, I mean, it was. I could feel the energy. You know, it's interesting to me. I did my actual retreat wasn't all that powerful of an experience. I don't really see the visualizations that I, you know, I think at the retreat as as the big benefit from here. They say that ayahuasca starts working on you the minute that you decide to take it. And that was true for me. I started seeing some strange things uh, and, and visions 
the, the minute that I decided to take that retreat in Amsterdam, um, yeah, I think I probably saw more visions in the two weeks leading up to the retreat than I did the first night at the retreat. And actually, since then, since the retreat, since I came back, I've actually I've seen more visions. And one of them was actually uh, about three, four days after the retreat. And I had just finished work. And that night, I dreamed, because me and my boss don't have the greatest relationship. I don't, I don't really like working with her. And I saw myself chastising other people. And I was being hard on them. And I was being unfair to them. And the next thing I saw was my boss's face. And I saw my face superimposed on top of her face. And I realized what Mother Ayahuasca was telling me that we are one and the same. We are the same person. And this was pretty, this was a very powerful message for me. And so even though I'm not on ayahuasca anymore, I feel like it's the spirit of the medicine, the mother ayahuasca that's always with me. And I'm constantly learning this, the, the minute that I've decided to take the medicine, I've been seeing these visions before, during, and after the ceremony. So, well, you might say to yourself, well, heck, if you're, if you're seeing visions like that, well, what's the point of going to ceremony? Well, I guess, and I guess you could, you could make that point. But I, I really would like to try uh, to do ayahuasca again uh, next year if I can. I feel like um, what ayahuasca does, it just helps to remove physical blockages. And when I, after I purged, after the ceremony, after the retreat, I felt like a million dollars. I came home, I felt extremely light, extremely energized. And I have noticed since the retreat that I used to get bogged down in front of my computer and I would just sit there and play online all day long. And since that retreat, I have been doing that less. I've been getting more work done. And I feel like I've definitely been able to remove some blockages. And I know that, you know, the, the ayahuasca picks up where I left off last time. And just before. Uh, the second ceremony, before the, the buzz, the high ended at the second ceremony, I, I could feel myself getting ready to purge again, getting ready to throw up again. And I was like getting closer and closer and closer. And I feel like, yeah, if I do ayahuasca again uh, and I get a nice powerful batch, I think probably the, one of the first things I'm going to do is probably throw up because I could feel it, the wave coming, 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 and it's building up, building up, building up. So yeah, that's... One, that's one of the things, yeah, so I mean, I guess uh, that's it. I mean, that's, that's basically uh, my, my ayahuasca experience, you know. I mean, the, the two biggest things, the, the biggest things I took was the energy remapping of, of my body and how everything got down here, kind of got compacted and pushed upwards. Um, you know, the, the feminine, being, uh, get, being introduced to the feminine spirit of ayahuasca. And um, just being on the spiritual journey and wanting to make myself a better person. And the, uh, I feel like the spirit of Mother Aya has been with me on my journey ever since. And, and, it, and will continues to be with me, uh, even after the fact. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, if, if, you know, if you, if you want to try ayahuasca, I would highly recommend it. Um, to me, I mean, I was I was filled with a lot of apprehension and fear at first because I didn't know what to expect. You know, I had read all this stuff on the internet, and you know, some of it's pretty scary. You know, I read somewhere that if you're scared of roller coasters, you shouldn't do Aya because you feel it makes you feel dizzy, feel nauseous. And I am deathly afraid of roller coasters, and I had no problem at all. Um, when you're on ayahuasca, basically you're you're in control and you're not in control. So. You know, because I, I've done so much meditation in the past, because I've done so much deep breathing practice, um, both of my trips were great. I had, I had a great, both nights, I just smiled and giggled a lot the whole time. I'm just laughing, and 
you know, I was making little jokes to myself about, you know, the shaman. Sometimes, because the shaman, he's going, he's, he's singing, and he's going around the room, and he's got his little broom and his little shakers, and he's shaking things at you. And, you know, sometimes, you know, he's, he gets a little close to my head. I'm like, you know, I'm thinking, gosh, I was, I was a person supposed to sleep right here with you shaking that thing around my head, you know. And I just, I just, I was just making little jokes to myself about, about that, you know. But it was it was a great trip, and I think part of the reason was, you know, I had such a wonderful experience, a wonderful trip, was because, uh, yeah, I am on top of things a little bit, and I try to always try to keep my thoughts focused. I don't let, you know, I keep my life simple, and I don't try to get myself uh, absorbed in too much anger, too much hate, or regret, or, or any of these negative emotions. Uh, I try to stay very much on point. <clears throat> I try to stay true to myself. You know, I'm very much a student of Stuart Wilde and Louise Hay and uh, Wayne Dyer and those guys, uh, Tony Robbins. And I try to follow their advice as much as I can. And Louise Hay, she's, I'm a big, uh, you know, follower. She's she's a big advocate on uh, mirror work and learning how to love yourself, telling yourself you love yourself every day in the mirror. And I've been doing myself doing that, working on myself every single day, uh, reading Stuart Wilde's uh, books, uh, reading, watching his videos, and, and learning about, you know, how to make myself a better person, how to be of more service to the community, to the world, and, and how to increase the frequency of, of uh, myself and, and those around me. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to do ayahuasca, you know, um, you might want to learn a little bit about meditation, breathing techniques, and how to keep yourself relaxed, keep your thoughts focused, uh, because a lot of people, they just completely lost it at the, at the retreat. Uh, some girl, one girl had to be completely removed. She started screaming and wailing and shouting, and she just, she went nuts. It was the German girl, and she's, she's actually a really sweet, really nice girl. And she, they had to put her in a separate room because she was just so loud. Uh, some people, you know, they, 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 you can tell they're, they're enjoying the trip. They're, you know, they're sitting there, they're, 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 dead, they're, they're tapping their toes to the beats of the music. And some people are, are having a hellish experiences. One guy, uh, he didn't, you know, different people have different metabolisms. And this one guy, after the first night, he had a very slow metabolism. Uh, first hour, didn't feel anything, so he topped off. Second hour went by, he didn't feel anything, he topped off again. So now he's had two top-offs. And everything, the medicine just hit him all at once. All three top, the, the main dosage and the two top-offs all hit him at once. And he was completely out of it. He went to the bathroom, and he fell down. And he was just, his mind was in a completely different place. He, he really, so, yeah, I mean, maybe, I think for the first time, if you're, if you're first taking it for the first time, maybe take it easy and don't try to do too much. Because everybody has different metabolisms. For me, onset didn't happen until, at first I felt buzzed, felt a little bit warm, the first 40 minutes or so. I'd say it continued, the buzz in my head continued to grow and build until hour number four, four and a half. It was kind of gradual for me. It wasn't like, some people after 10 minutes, they start seeing visualizations, they feel buzz right off the bat. And for me, it was never, neither was ceremony was like that. Uh, both times for me, Everything happened very slowly, especially the second night. I didn't, the medicine didn't hit me until I threw up. And that didn't happen until hour five, until well after the shaman closed, officially closed the ceremony. And I continued to feel sick and to feel very buzzed until about hour six, maybe even after that. And I just lost track of the time. Because when you're, when you're buzzed, you're, you know, you don't, you kind of lose track of time. You're kind of in the grips of the medicine. One of the big questions that kept popping up in my mind as I watched other videos on ayahuasca and as I read articles and blogs on other people's experiences is how did ayahuasca affect you after you took it? How did it benefit you after you took it? And I've outlined a few of those things, uh, the visualizations I've had and the dreams that I've had. And I guess one of the big things, first of all, I have more self-confidence. Before I took the ayahuasca, I never, I was always very scared to look the camera straight in the eye. And 
right now I have no problems doing that. So that's one benefit, one tangible benefit that I can see. Um, I don't feel terribly nervous right now. Uh, there's a little, you know, I, uh, in the past I would feel really nervous and, and I feel a lot more at ease right now. Everything feels a little bit more enhanced. I have a little more energy. Um, I've always wanted to, you know, I, I really want a girlfriend in my life, a, a few in my life right now, to have and to hold. And I really want that now. My libido feels like it's going crazy. And I feel like I really need a female in my life at this time. Everything feels a little more enhanced. Um, you know, I, I just absolutely adore little kids. And when I look at a little kid now, I've always found little kids to be adorable, but I find them just to be a little bit more adorable now and a little bit more cute. When I, you know, I, I, I read about other people, how they feel more, like a, a, a great deal more gratitude towards everything they have in life, you know, more thankful. And I did have those thoughts while I was on, on uh, the first night I was on ayahuasca. Do I feel more grateful now? I feel a little bit more appreciative. I feel like that's been enhanced. But I don't, by and large, my day-to-day, -day, the biggest change, it's been a week now since I've done the, the ayahuasca, is more energy, a little bit happier, uh, a little bit more self-confidence and um, character wise I don't see a lot of change I'm not I'm not a better person I'm not a worse person I've been a Buddhist for more than 20 years um, that hasn't really changed you know uh, I'm not doing meditation any more or less than I was before I was always doing meditation on a daily basis and that hasn't changed. I still think it's very, very important to do meditation. Has it really changed me? I mean, a whole lot. I guess physically, you know, that you do the purging, and I guess there's some negative toxins get removed or whatever. And I guess, I guess the changes in me have been subtle. They've been small. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't feel like a dramatically different person. Though. I don't feel like, you know, I just took a wonderful trip someplace and I have all these memories and experiences. Well, I guess I do. I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess most, most of the benefit from my trip was just taking the positivity of the people that were, of the experience. The ayahuasca retreat experience was just a really great experience. Um, the people made me feel loved and respected and appreciated. And that was actually a big, big part of the experience. Because I guess ayahuasca, you can't really see it as a medicine. It's, it's more of an experience that you have with other people and you talk afterwards and you hug and, 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 you, and you share the love with one another. But yeah, by and large, uh, my day-to-day -day is, is, is the same. You know, I don't, I don't want to do, and my goals in life are the same, you know, the, is the way I want to go about them the same pretty much you know I believe very much in law of attraction visualization to get what you want and that hasn't changed I'm still reading Stuart Wild books uh, I'm pretty much continuing to do the things that I was doing before the ayahuasca so in terms of day-to-day -day, basically who I am my values and everything everything is pretty much stay the same I'm, I'm basically the same person um, you know I, I may have a little less social anxiety now than I did in the past. Uh, maybe, maybe a little more so, maybe a little more self-confidence, but that, that's that's about it. So yeah, I mean, I, if you want to do ayahuasca, I highly recommend it, you know. I, I mean, for me, I'm looking forward, very much looking forward to the next ayahuasca ceremony. Um, for me personally, I know what to expect. Uh, I know I have a great shaman who will uh, support me and he knows what to do with me if I if I go nuts. So yeah, I guess uh, that's, that's uh, pretty much all my thoughts on uh, ayahuasca. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, leave them down below in the description and uh, I'll try my best to answer them. Peace.